Next we have uh, Ornette Coleman, uh, the Ornette Coleman Quartet, Friends and Neighbors, um, live at Prince Street. Ornette Coleman is another musician that I'm kind of obsessed with. If you look at my records, I have a section of Ornette Coleman records about that thick. Uh, <clears throat> one of my favorite musicians, and he also worked in his bands with many of my favorite musicians. Uh, of course, Charlie Hayden on bass. Um, and in this, uh, and, uh, this, this is his late, late 60s, early 70s quartet with Dewey Redman and Ed Blackwell. And Ed Blackwell is um, a musician that I had the good fortune of getting to study with and play a little bit with shortly before he died in the early 90s. This, uh, as much as I love all of Ornette's music, this particular um, permutation of his band with Dewey and Blackwell and Charlie during that particular time period, would, would, if I had to pick one, that might be my favorite. Um, this is an album that was recorded, I think some of it was live and some of it was sort of fake live but from his loft and it was put out on the Flying Dutchman label which was a label that Bob Thiel started of, of Impulse fame started after he left Impulse or maybe while he was at Impulse he started a new label and um, it's got this cool gatefold with lots of great photos from the concert you can see Don Cherry was there Gil Evans Pharaoh oh, yeah. Sanders some young hippie dude I don't know there's probably someone famous I don't know I shouldn't say that uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. This is uh, an absolutely just the breathtaking joy and inventiveness and um, and spiritual quality that Ornette Coleman's music has comes through in such a visceral way on this album. And it's sort of a microcosm of a lot of his music in that there's a big variety of um, different types of, of pieces and different ways of playing. It starts off with the title track, which with Blackwell playing one of the funkiest things I've ever heard him play. Um, it, it's one of those rare times where he really sounds like he's a New Orleans drummer. Most of the time when you'd ask him about New Orleans music, he's, he'd said, I don't really have any interest in that. I'm a bebop, I'm a, mm. I'm a Max Roach fan. And um, mm. that's what he was coming out of. He didn't really have anything to say about New Orleans music, but you can really hear it on this track. Then there's some tracks where Ornette plays uh, trumpet. He also plays violin on the, on the first track. And then there's just some amazing things of them just doing their thing. and. The group sound that this particular band had, the group, uh, the spirit of group communal playing that they had was just, in my opinion, unmatched. And the thing about it, it's kind of a cliche, but one of the things that just comes through when you hear this music is there's so much love in it. And um, so I can't recommend this record hi more highly. I, uh, I became obsessed with this because a friend of mine gave me a tape of it. And when I was working at Academy Records in the 90s, this record finally came in the shop. The jazz buyer, who his name's Mike Davis, he now runs the Academy Records in the East Village. He owns the one in the East Village. He was nice enough to set this aside for me and let me take it home. So I owe you one, Mike. This is an amazing record.
I'm gonna change things up and do some classical records. These are two Bach albums that I found at a Goodwill store recently. And they were about $1.50 each, these two Bach sets. One of them is the Brandenburg Concertos, another one is uh, the Orchestral Suites and Overtures. This one's our Carl Munchinger with the Stuttgart Chamber Orchestra. This is uh, John Ellie Gardner with the English Baroque Solace. Okay, so I didn't know anything about these records, but I didn't have any Bach orchestral stuff on LP, and I thought, oh, they're cheap, I'll get them. I looked at the label on here, it says Treasury Series, London. I thought, well, this is probably some budget thing. It's probably gonna be terrible, but I'll just take a chance on it because it didn't cost anything. And I put this on and it sounded absolutely stunningly gorgeous. One of the best sounding records I've ever heard of any style of music. And I did a little research online. The internet, once again, is your friend. And uh, it turns out that this series, especially when it has this Union Jack here on the corner, it says imported from England. These are basically the old London blueback oh. uh, records re being reissued. And apparently they used all the same metal parts and all the same pressing plant and everything. Oh. And they're virtually identical sounding to the original Decca blueback and London bluebacks that cost a lot of money that you'd never want to pay for. And so if you ever, this is just a more of a tip, if you ever see any of these and it's a piece that you think you might like or a performance you think you might like, don't be afraid of, of this treasury series. It's, it's sometimes a stereo treasury series and um, you, if you open it up, it has the same label that you like to see, the FFRR or full frequency range recording. Um, and quiet vinyl, amazing sound. Okay, so that's that one. Uh, you get, but particularly look out for the, the flag. Huh. If it doesn't have the flag, that means it was pressed in New York. It might not sound as good. Although I have a couple of those and they sound great too. Oh. Uh, I, again, stuff that I picked up from my father-in-law. Um, then the other one also sounds incredible. It's a more modern recording. Uh, it sounds like you're there. I know it's a cliche to say, but it sounds like you're there in this church wherever they recorded this. Um, absolutely gorgeous, and the funny thing about this is I, it was about a year that I've been listening to this record constantly. I mean, the, both of them are amazing performances too, and I think they're both sort of like early adopters of people who really got early performance practice down and really specialized in doing Baroque music, um, and box music in particular. It was, I had it for about a year and I realized it had this thing here, it says Numerique Digital and DMM, and if you're any kind of audio nerd, you know these are things that you want to avoid usually. But this is proof that that doesn't really mean anything. Because <laughs> it sounds, I'd be, I defy you to tell me this doesn't sound incredible. This is an absolutely gorgeous recording, amazing sounding records. So um, if it's cheap, don't be afraid of that. So this is my latest record, Super Big Mouth, which came out in uh, October of this year, 2019. This project combines my two long-standing bands, Big Mouth and Superette. Big Mouth being my band with Craig Taborn, Gerald Cleaver, Chris Cheek, and Tony Malaby. Um, two tenor saxophones, bass, drums, and keyboards. And Superette, which is my electric band, featuring me on electric bass and uh, Jonathan Goldberger and Curtis Hasselbring on guitar and Dan Reeser on drums. So this is both bands together. Uh, two drummers, two tenor saxophones, two guitarists, uh, Craig Tamer on keyboards and myself on bass. And um, it's on Power Classic Records. And uh, I'm really proud of the work all these musicians did on this album. It was really a joy to record and perform this music. This is uh, the vinyl release. And uh, as you can see, there's a gatefold and if you buy it, on the inside, it shows you where everybody is on the stereo field. So I got to do this nerdy um, vinyl uh, audiophile thing as part of the project, which was really fun. It was recorded by uh, Andy Taub at Broken Recording, mixed by Ron St. Germain at his place in, in New Jersey, Saints Place, and it was mastered by uh, Scott Hall. So I had 
really, I was really lucky to have such an amazing uh, team of people to work with. And it was uh, co-produced by David Breskin. So it's on Pyroclastic Records, which is Chris Davis's label, and it's available now. You can find this at the Pyroclastic website. They also, I think, I think they have their own Bandcamp uh, store page, or you can buy it through my website, chrislightcap.com.